Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to some World War II gameplay. Will you believe that one? Today, I am in the ugliest tiger that there is in War Thunder. And that includes not just the German tigers, which are beautiful but boxy machines, but every sort of plane and ship and whatever carries the name tiger. This is the most ugly one. Now, this is the VK4501P, and it's basically the Tiger 1 prototype from Porsche. And if you look closely to the chassis from the front, uh, you can see that it is similar or very closely related to the hull that you'll find on the Ferdinand. After this version has not been accepted for service, the hulls were already produced and they were like bolted on with some extra 100mm plating on the front. That's the unique shape of the Ferdinand and then, you know, p putting a really boxy big casemate on top of it with a long 88. Thus, the Ferdinand was born. But this thing is incredibly unmaneuverable, incredibly slow, and the rotation speed is so bad. I mean, oh my god, oh my god, I never doubted this. <laughs> okay, that's rather the exception. And uh, I think to myself, well, this is a very rare tank these days, right? Uh, I'm actually not quite sure what, where you could get this from. Um, after over eight years of playing War Thunder, I can't really remember where every single tank, plane, ship, helicopter I've gotten from. Sorry about this. But I sure as hell know how to fight this map. Because this church, uh, from this side, is the spot to just have big map control. The enemies don't expect you there, they very often show their broadside, and even if they try to turn around, you hear them that, that closely, if the sound system in War Thunder works, that is the case. So I'm just chilling here. Basically the turret is the Tiger tank turret, and uh, yeah, the mobility and also the hull is worse because there are those side cheeks that are angled at a 45 degree angle. So if you try to angle this tank like with the Tiger to show both a bit of the side and the front of the hull, <coughs> thank you, then you make the side and the front armor stronger because they are angled towards incoming shells. When you fight, you know, World War II technology tank with APHE shells or APCVC rounds, etc., especially APCR, this matters a lot. But on this tank, yeah, there it is, the cheek directly under the gun barrel, yeah, there it is. That is a bad thing, because that is then absolutely flat. So you can imagine why I rarely use this tank. We will see this later in the post battle results as well. But it's a premium tank. And that was a bit of a lucky situation that I heard him just for a moment and then I saw him. Oh, that's a super Pershing. So let's hope for the best. There's the tree. And we have to side off the turret and Germany suffers. <laughs> Damn it. I hit the one spot where you shouldn't hit. And uh, we have another happy M41. Customer of the day. It's beautiful. Oh my god. I have played so much top tier lately uh, that I'm just used to highly maneuverable, highly agile tanks with AP FSDS, thermal imaging, high turret rotation speed, etc. But this, this, this immediately feels better. Also, believe it or not, because the maps are more designed around this kind of, uh, how should I say, it? performance, right? Um, the tanks need a bit of time to accelerate. They need a bit of time to swing the gun around and that explains that shot. That was a bit bad on my behalf. Um, pulled the trigger just a split second too early. Obviously the 88mm gun here is actually really reliable these days. Obviously except versus Russian tanks because yeah. KWK-36 uh, with 80 rounds of ammunition, same ammunition type, same reload, gun depression, gun elevation uh, and turret armor around it then as I said already on the Tiger 1. So let's try to get the Super Pershing um, because certain people just don't have the situation awareness but I think this guy just has the problem of being preoccupied. There is the airstrike and there he's dead. 
and that's good. And now we can see one of the advantages of this tank, that it goes in reverse as fast as it goes forwards, and that has another advantage. Because with APFSDS you can shoot through the transmission and the engine block and still blow up ammunition and kill crew, but with APHE it just explodes after a certain distance and when you shoot an enemy tank in the back then very often the transmission or the engine eats the shot. And there we have just the perfect example. Don't have quite the gun depression. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect demonstration. I was not even set on fire. Now, here is one thing that I just quickly wanted to add. Um, I've seen a lot of gimmicks getting added to, you know, light tanks, the scouting, uh, to help any sort of allied player repairing. They have already high powerful guns, high mobility, maneuverability, etc. Uh, so they have a lot of gimmicks. Heavy tanks have nothing but armor which kind of got made irrelevant by power creep and especially with a tank like this it can feel at times really bad you know you want to play your powerful well protected heavy tanks and then something yeets you with a heat fs at this battle rating not yet so much but the higher you go the more it becomes apparent what I try to say, there are actually ways to buff heavy tanks. For example, when you want to replenish one crew member for light tanks and medium tanks, why not make it so that for a heavy tank, the entire crew is replenished and healed, right? That, that would be already a buff. It doesn't really change uh, so much, but maybe it's just a little bit of an extra that heavy tanks need. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe give us more maps with dedicated shooting areas, right? Where you don't have to fight close quarters because with this tank, with that slow turret rotation speed, yeah, it gets ugly if you have to cover multiple angles, multiple ways where enemies can come out of nowhere at any time. This gets you killed, right? This really gets you killed very often. And on top of this, obviously, the beautiful overpressure mechanic where you know armor is a bit irrelevant if you hit the turret face and it splashes down that's how it should work for big shells but a lot of the derp guns they live and die by close quarters maps if you have large maps that would be much less popular and there we go that's kill number seven so as you noticed i was really really careful and uh, yeah I didn't really dare to go in into a brawl or to you know go for a cap and uh, this church from this side is really for me the key point and it's good for a heavy tank for a medium tank light tank tank destroyer you name it so the rarity that is the VK 4501 P basically the hull of the Ferdinand with less armor even it's just a 100 millimeter front plate not 200 millimeter like on the Ferdinand and uh, yeah that's really the extremely bad part about it um, so if we make it quick there is also the Panzer Befehlswagen 6P that actually has the 200 millimeter plating but that sits at 5.7 instead of 5.3 but therefore has a much uglier matchmaker I'd say and also is rank 4 by the way so I think that was the battle and actually I survived it which is really great so let's have a quick look at the post battle results shall we and as you can see nice income and nice RP for that low uh, battle rating in contrast 80,000 civil lines 10,000 RP and also the heavy metal hero so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like more of World War II stuff or more modern stuff. Lately I've gotten a lot of comments that you want to see me playing some World War II stuff again. And yeah, there it is. Now here have some nice picture compilation and give this video a like with it.
subscribe if you want to see more let me know in the comment section what you like and dislike about this kind of gameplay and as usual we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder mm -hmm.